Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality and today we will be starting a series on how to make an envelope junk journal. This is one of the new junk journals that I have up in my shop right now and it is made out of two envelopes that are six inches by nine inches and the envelope looks like this. I picked these envelopes up at Michael's after Christmas, they were a pack of 50 and they were, I believe, 50% or 75% off. So they're pretty thin, so you do need to reinforce them with putting paper on the outside and the inside of them, but they do work well. And I just love them because they are red and they match the new paper that I picked up at Michael's. I am using one of the new hot buys from Michaels and it's called Love and Devotion. This is one of the two that they have at least in the, the exact like Valentine sort of colors with the pink and the red. They have another pad and I don't remember what the name of it is. If I can find them I'll put links down below for you but it coordinates with this one but I just really like this one better um, as far as the total collection. So this is the one I used and as you can see I have just enough left to make the last one of these. I'm going to replicate this book because I always usually do two of every kind of journal that I put in my shop. So the things that you need of course are some scrapbook papers and if you want to make one of these journals you can do any theme that you want for any season or whatever but I just thought it would be fun to do one in the Valentine and show you how to do that since we're doing since Valentine's Day is coming up so you need some paper and for my journal it is half inch thick so it's just one signature but I ended up using three papers that are the scrapbook printed scrapbook papers and then in between those, I add in vintage papers, tea stained, um, or different colored papers, and then the doilies, and the like the book pages, and the sheet music. And I think I also have a red, yeah, a red lunch sack here. So I add all these things in. I have about, let's see, this is my cover, so this is going to be one, it's going to be sewn together, I, I ran out of, I was like one sh short one sheet of paper out of this whole pad to finish off my journals, so I ended up adding another piece I had in my stash, but I had to sew these together to make one of my uh, little fold, like one of the pages anyway. So this counts as one of my printed papers and then I'm going to be using the last two in here, which is this sheet and this sheet. So you'll need three of your printed scrapbook pages and then I have one vintage Valentine recipe, or it was from a holiday cookbook. I'm going to be using that. I have some pink paper. I have an envelope here that I've decorated with some scrapbook paper. I have a red doily. I have a piece of Valentine tissue paper that I've folded in half. I have this lunch sack. And I'm just going to fold that in half. And then I have a piece of tea stained graph paper, tea stained notebook paper, tea stained, it's another sort of graph paper. It's log, logarithmic, logarithmic paper <laughs> and vintage sheet music, like paper that you use to write your music notes on. So just gather all your different kinds of papers that you want to use. 
I also want to find another piece of another sheet me like an actual sheet music with words and everything I need to look through my stash and find something that will go along with the Valentine's and then also what I have here are some random things I have another heart doily I have some laces and trims that I used along the edges of my papers and I sewed those on so I have those gathered I have a piece of fabric this pink and white gingham and I'm going to use that as a flip up here is a die cut sticker and I sewed that in as a little pocket here I have one of my tags prepped and I just cut a rectangle I rounded the corners and cut off the corners up at the top here and then I have this little strip that's from the paper pad and this is the fabric I'm going to use as the tag at the top but I'm going to sew this on just using a zigzag stitch so I have that and then I have some paper clips here that I've made with fabric or with ribbon and this ribbon I believe I found that this is from Walmart no this is from the Dollar Tree so that is what I'm using for my ties on the journal these are some of the cut aparts tickets are from or what I have in my stash but here are some cut aparts from the paper pad itself this one and this that's just a piece of the paper but it's cut out and then this was one of the cut aparts and then these three are some of the cut apart so those are going to be used as embellishments I also have this cardstock sticker that was a separate like sticker collection that I purchased to go along with the book or with the paper so I have all these things <clears throat> ready to go I made a little tassel and comment down below if you want me to show you how to make these they're super easy though I had this beautiful yarn so I decided to make the tassels and then I added these they're actually like glass beverage charms but I just thought they would be really nice to put on the side here as a like an easy charm so I have I picked them up at the Target dollar spot so and they came in a package of four so why don't we get this stuff cleared off and get started making our Valentine so the first thing you're going to do is open up your envelopes and you're going to score it a half an inch from the folds on the envelope towards the flap after that what you need to do is put some glue on one of the flaps of the envelope and that flap you're going to glue to the inside of the other envelope and you want to line up both of those score marks so it makes the spine at, at a half an inch now you will need a piece of paper that is about eight and seven eighths inch by six inches wide and you're going to score it at a half an inch in the center of that piece of paper and then fold it in because this is going to go on the inside of those two envelopes and just line up the score marks with the score marks on the envelopes and you don't even need to glue that in it stays in by itself now you're just going to take a couple pieces of paper I have sewn a couple here because I wanted to use those two little cut aparts at the bottom so I just measured out I just eyeballed and cut out these papers and then sewed a pocket in the bottom and I glued them along the bottom edge to make that pop to make the pocket and just glued both sides and then on the back I'm going to glue this triangle piece onto the flap just kind of, to kind of decorate the envelope and this flap I'll be gluing along the bottom to make a side pocket
And now you just want to glue along the top of your spine just so that that is nice and secure along the edge and then put some glue. Later on I go in and add some paper to the back of that envelope so I pulled this apart as you can see there. Now I just took a piece, another piece of cardstock or printed cardstock and cut it down to fit right inside so there was a small border. And now go ahead and stick down that pocket back there. Adding all this paper just makes it a little thicker and the cover makes it a little bit sturdier. Now for the front cover I chose this piece and this was one of the cut aparts on the paper pad. So I'm just cutting it down a little bit so that it fits nicely onto the front of the book. And then I also wanted to add some paper to the spine and then a little bit folded over onto the front cover and a little bit on the back. So I'm cutting this down to so it shows a tiny bit board of the border on the envelope and then I'm just scoring right in along the edge so it'll fit around on that spine. And then just take this piece and glue it down on the front and the back and then along the spine. I didn't do this on all of my books. I just chose to do this on this one because that bigger cut apart that I put on the front of the cover wasn't there wasn't enough space to put another contrasting paper or fabric behind it so I just wanted a little bit of something besides just the red envelope. I made this a pocket so I just put glue along the sides and the bottom that way I could put a tag in the top. Now I'm cutting my ribbon to make the ties and also I used ribbon for my paper clips. But I'm just adding a little one edge of the ribbon on the outside before I stick the pocket down on the front. And then I also added the ribbon on the back cover, but I had to pull up a little bit of the paper to do that because I forgot to put the ribbon in for the back cover. You don't have to glue your ribbons in like this. Sometimes I just cut a big piece of ribbon and tie it around the whole thing and then it's just loose. But on these I decided I wanted the ribbons to be attached so they could tie it. And you also could glue it all the way around the book underneath all the paper but since I had the pocket on the back that wasn't an option. And you just want to make sure that you get your glue all the way on, on the edges so the paper doesn't come up. The last thing I want to put on my cover is the tassel. And I just decided to glue my tassel on the inside of the spine. So I'm just cutting a small piece of matching paper and adding some glue there right in the center and sticking the yarn down in there and then adding the paper on top of it just to keep it secure on the inside of the spine. Now you could add the tassel to a ring and add a little lobster clasp and then just poke, punch a hole in there, but this is the way I decided to do these. I'm going to add some felt hearts, and these were hearts I believe I picked up at the Dollar Tree, and they're super cute. They have two different colors of felt and they're stitched and then they have a little heart rhinestone in the center and I decided to add some trim at the bottom so I have this pink pom-pom trim that I picked up at the Target dollar spot so I'm just putting a line of glue at the bottom sticking down my pom-pom trim and kind of let it dry for a few seconds and then I'll go on around the back cover
And you want to make sure that this is your last step because this is going to take a few minutes for it to totally dry because you don't want to mess it up by doing other stuff. So now I'm going to go on and work on the inside of my pages. I'm going to cut down these two pieces of cardstock. My pages I made eight and seven eighths tall and then cut it down to 11 inches wide and then folded it in half. I wanted to make that big Happy Valentine's Day page into my center of my signature. So I folded it in half so that was on the inside and I'm going to go in later and add a strip for a belly band. And then the other piece I cut down to the same size but folded it with the right side out. Now I'm going to just line up my signature. I start with one piece of the printed cardstock and then go and add three pieces of just the other random pages and then insert another piece of printed cardstock, three more pieces of the random papers, and then a doily. I was kind of looking off to the side because I wanted to make this the same as the other one. And then the last piece was that big heart printed cardstock for the inside signature. So now I'm going to take all my trims and attach them onto the pages that I want them to be sewn as well as add some belly bands and little tuck spots. So I just go in and I add paper clips and attach things where I want them and then I take it all to the sewing machine at one time. It just goes quicker that way. I love to make ruffles with fabric and then also make little tassels on pages. So I just did that. I cut a piece of my fabric and attached it and I'll just sew that on the end when I get to the sewing machine. And then I'm also making pockets by just gluing down because I didn't want to sew onto that envelope. I'm going to add some lace to that page. And then I added a strip along the bottom of that page for a pocket. And then I like to add doilies on the outside of, on the edge of the papers and they go in and just sew down the edge of it. And then it kind of makes a little tuck spot there. If I want to add any stickers, I do that at this point as well. But then I'll also do a final flip through at the end and add things in, like stamp, doing some stamping on some pages. Here's a belly band. And then I'm going to add some pom pom trim to that one. I love making little flip ups with fabric. So I just sew along the top edge of that fabric and then I added this little glittery heart at the bottom just as a little pull tab. And then on this page I'm going to add that heart doily. and then lace to this page. On this page I have some heart cupcake liners and so I thought it would be really cute to fold it in half along the edge of this page. So I just spread some glue with my finger over the bottom and just press it down over the top of the page. On this one I'm making a little tuck spot with a couple pieces of the scrapbook paper. And now I have it all sewn. I used a zigzag stitch and I'm ready to put my signature together. So I'm going to take my cover and place it all together in there. You want to line it up 
along the edge of the cover right in the middle and make sure they're all snug up against there and all lined up the way you want them to be and then you take some of your paper clips and just clip along the edges. I usually used four paper clips, two on each side. And it just kind of, kind of helps to keep them together so it doesn't move around when you're poking the holes or sewing your signature with, you know, your needle and thread through there. So now I'm using my awl and I'm poking a hole in the center. And I like to be able to hold it up and poke my holes so I can see where it's coming out the other end. If you want to measure this and like put little dots and do the cover first and then the signature, you can do it that way, but this is what is easiest for me. Now you need a piece of your twine or whatever it is you're sewing. You need it to be three times the size of the length of your book. And then I use an embroidery needle that has a bigger head on it. And sometimes it's a little tough to get this through, but I got it through. So now you want to poke it through the center hole. Sometimes it might misalign and you have to kind of work it through. That happens to me a lot. And then go up through the top hole, back into the center. kind of misaligned there so you kind of have to work I had to go down through this there I got it through and now you want to go all the way down to your bottom hole and then through the middle and that's your last step now putting your thread on one on each side of that middle thread you're going to tie some a double knot and you want to make sure it's tight on the back, on the outside of the spine. And then I just, I double knot it and then I tie it in a bow and then I clip it off. And that's the complete journal. I hope you liked this video. Give me a thumbs up if you did. Leave me a comment and subscribe and I'll see you again next time. This is Kim with Creative Crafticality. Bye. God bless.